hello everyone and welcome to our channel uh, today's video is a little bit different uh, for those who's following with us all our videos are about homesteading uh, but this video is different it's uh, about the events that's happening in the world these days and uh, the war in uh, Israel between Hamas and Israel and uh, and in what the Bible says about uh, uh, these events. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos uh, online and I heard a lot of preachers, well-known preachers, uh, speaking about it and uh, bringing up Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel 38. And uh, most of uh, the preacher who bring Ezekiel 38 say it's very close it's gonna be it's almost there and uh, put things together from Ezekiel 38 and the nations are listed in Ezekiel 38 anticipating that everything will come around as Ezekiel 38 indicate. So, uh, before I start my uh, presentation of uh, what I'm going to present to you, why it's not Ezekiel 38, I want to mention that I'm not a pastor. I don't have any uh, special education in seminaries or uh, Bible colleges or anything. I'm just a normal person who reads his Bible. So uh, with that, uh, let me tell you why I personally don't believe Ezekiel 38 is uh, uh, what we're going to experience in the coming days, months, and years uh, of this war. Uh, because this war is not going to end until the Antichrist come up with the peace treaty between the Arabs and the Jews. So I'm going to read Ezekiel 38, uh, uh, parts of it, and uh, we'll go over why it's not what we're experiencing these days. So Ezekiel 38 talks about uh, 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 the main Um, character is Gog or Gog, you know, depending on how you want to uh, pronounce it. Uh, Gog and Magog, or Gog and Magog. Gog is a is a title for a leader of a Magog, and um, it lists different nations. So I'm going to read verse two: Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against them. So this is a prophecy, prophecy about the future. And, uh, and then it goes about that God will decide to gather many different nations and go to war against Israel. So now at least the, the, the nations, uh, it's uh, uh, Meshach and Tubal are the only two nations that we can figure out uh, where are they, and they are actually current modern day, are. Uh, around the, the, the Black Sea and the, the other sea uh, uh, to the uh, east of it, uh, which northeast of Turkey, uh, north of Iran. Uh, so that's these two countries. Uh, now also in verse 5, it says Persia, which is modern-day uh, Iran, 
Ethiopia or in other translation Kush which is Sudan and Libya which is Libya so uh, which is modern day Libya or northern Africa so now we're gonna go uh, to the event also it goes to verse 6 Gomer and all its troops the house of Tagmar from the far north and all its troops so that is Turkey so we have Gog and Magog which Russia all Bible scholars say this is Russia okay and uh, we have Meshach and Tuval, which is used to be part of the Soviet Union. Uh, we have Iran, Sudan, Libya, and Turkey. And all these countries will be leading a confederacy against Israel, according to this prophecy. I'm not going to read the whole chapter for the sake of time. It's in the Bible. Go and read it. But the prophecy talks about God, the prince of Magog, decide he wants to go and plunder and, and take booty and booty and, and you know, take everything that Israel has as livestock or silver or gold or merchandise goods whatever because there is a prosperity and there is wealth in Israel and he's he wants to to take that so he gather all these armies now uh, Going down in, in reading here, I'm going to read verse, uh, verse 13. Sheba, Didan, the merchants of Tarshish, there is other nations talking to God and saying, and all their young lands will say to you, say to God, have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty? To carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to take great plunder. So that is the purpose of the conquest. Now, Verse 16, you will come up against my people. So that's God God's speaking by the prophet Ezekiel. You will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days that I will bring you against my, my land so that the nations may know me, God, when I am hallowed in you. So I, I want to go back to uh, uh, verse 11. And uh, this, uh, this verse is very... Uh, important to identify the time when this prophecy will be fulfilled. You will say, I will go up against a land of an unwalled villages. Unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely all of them dwelling without walls, 
and having neither bars or nor gates. So this is a description of Israel with full prosperity. Uh, the land is uh, obviously the land of milk and honey and as God uh, promised them. Uh, they are in full prosperity, peace, no need to lock the door, no walls, no gates, everybody living in peaceful environment. Obviously, that is not what Israel is experiencing today. Since 1948, when they became a nation, which is another prophecy, fulfillment, 1948 is a fulfillment of Amos 9, uh, the last half of the chapter. It is, uh, that is a fulfillment 1948 is the fulfillment of Amos 9. Now, this is way after that. So, since 1948, Israel has never been in a peaceful environment. All the nations around them gather to, to they have wars in 1948, 56, 67, 73, and in the 80s, it was the suicide bombers everywhere. And we have Hamas and Hezbollah uh, firing rockets most of the time. The Iron Dome is almost on operation 24-7. We cannot say at any point of time that Israel, yeah, now they are property in prosperity, but they are not in peace. Uh, so, now I'm going to read to you another passage in the Bible about Gog and Magog. Uh, the whole event of Ezekiel 38 and 39 is summarized in four verses in Revelation 20. And uh, before I go and read Revelation 20, uh, let me give you an example about what I'm gonna, I want to mention. Uh, we have four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We know that in the four Gospels, John the Baptist was mentioned. And in all four Gospels, the disciple John was mentioned. Not one time any of these two mentioned, it's questionable who it was. If it was John the Baptist, it's clear it's John the Baptist. If it was John the disciple, it's clear it's John the disciple. Because we have 66 books in the Bible, and they're all inspired by the Holy Spirit. So it's all from one source, the Holy Spirit. So in the whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, God and Magog are listed in the genealogies of Noah, which listed in Genesis chapter 10, and it's repeated in First Chronicles chapter 2. So this is just names of descendant of Noah. And they moved to different places and they established communities. 
that has nothing to do with what we're studying today. But Gog and Magog, after this, two genealogies, which are the same genealogy but listed twice, it listed the whole Bible. It's only in Revelation 20 and Ezekiel 38. So I'm going to read Revelation 20 and see if it is the same event. Does it match what it is in Ezekiel 38? So Revelation 20 starts from verse 7. Give you a background. In Revelation, we have the letters for the churches, and then we have the rapture, and the seven year tribulation until chapter 19. In chapter 19, Jesus comes, and the battle of Armageddon, and then Jesus reigned for a thousand years, and we reign with him for a thousand years on earth, and then verse chapter 20 verse 7 now when the thousand year have expired Satan will be released from the, his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth God and Magog to gather them together to battle whose number is as the sand of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrendered the camp of the saints and all the and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So this is a very quick summary of a battle that Gog and Magog is listed here. against Israel but what is the background ground here this is right after the thousand year reign Israel would be prosper and living in a safe environment That's number one match here. The, the condition of the prosperity and the safety and the peaceful environment that Jesus established because this Jerusalem will be his headquarter of his reign on earth. That's how it's going to be. And Satan will be released out of his prison. He's been in prison for a thousand years. And he will deceive the nations. Now, only Gog and Magog are listed here. The rest are not mentioned. But they are not. doesn't mean they are not included. It's listed in details in Ezekiel 38. But if the Holy Spirit speak about God, God and Magog in Ezekiel 38 and Revelation 20 only, we have to determine that the Holy Spirit means God and Magog in both. So, as I mentioned, you know, it was never confused between John the Baptist and John the Disciple. And here, if, if, 
if the Holy Spirit coming here and giving these words to John the Apostle when he wrote when he wrote Revelation and saw the visions and it says Gog and Magog the Holy Spirit knows what is written in Ezekiel 38 but let's go into more details so In verse 9 in Revelation 20, the second part, And fire come down from God out of heaven and devoured them. That's the result. They are coming against God's people and God's, in, in his wrath against their sin, sent fire to devour them. Let's go back to Ezekiel 38. And go to verse 22. Ezekiel 38, 22. And I will bring him to judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him. Flooding rain great hailstone, fire, and brimstone. So it is the same judgment on the same names, Gog and Magog. And the same people that they are attacking, they are attacking Israel, and they are coming to the same location, the land of Israel. And they are coming to plunder, to take booty. Same names, same nation they're coming against, same conditions of prosperity and peaceful environment, safety. And same judgment. We have to say that the Bible explains itself, and we have to accept that Ezekiel 38 is an account in details for Revelation 20, verses 7 to 12. I'm not saying that these events is not going to happen in our lifetime because some prophecies has dual fulfillment meaning a prophecy and it will come to fulfillment in one time and it can happen come to another fulfillment in another time that's a possibility but nothing happening today that matches Ezekiel 38 what it matches it is exactly at least a thousand and seven years from now if we are raptured today there will be a seven year tribulation and then the battle of Armageddon and then thousand year of reign of Christ and then Revelation 20 verse 7 comes. And that's my interpretation. And uh, uh, I, I was compelled to make that video. Because uh, many, many, many pastors, well known. Pastors I learned from. I admire and I take their opinion uh, for my own guidance. But they are coming to say that we're seeing Ezekiel 38 coming to, to happen very close. And it might happen in our lifetime. Uh, some pastors said that these events happened before the rapture. 
and uh, I just wanted to uh, put things in the uh, as the Bible say it. It's not what I say, what the Bible say. Now, how is that important to us as Christians? Uh, the importance is, you know, I want you to imagine if all these events happen and we don't have Revelation, the book of Revelation. I want you to imagine all the world coming to this uh, one world government, one world religion, one world economy, and we don't have the book of Revelation. We would be freaking out. We would be losing our faith. God wants us to know these things. And God wants us to know it in the right perspective as he intended it. Hope you learn. If you think I'm wrong, please put it in the comment and let me know. And uh, I will encourage you to dig deeper in your Bible and uh, be aware of what's happening and be aware of your personal status with the Lord that uh, you know that you know that you know when the rapture occurs you will be there thank you and God bless you